we will be diving into the matchup momentarily queen walkers winning their first couple of matches existence knocked into the lower bracket but have managed to battle their way back up woody so it is going to be an interesting one as to who can put themselves in the lead with this first war Green Walkers have had a stronger defense, 70% success, including the only one star that has been scored so far in this world championship. On the other hand, Existence has had a 53% success on defense. Their base is not holding up quite as well, but certainly still have got as good a shot as any. Queen Walkers being an undefeated team from the upper bracket are favored in this best of two matchup. But the first attack will be coming in now from Metro. A lightning quick attack will take down the Royal Champion and send in a battle blimp for another air defense kill. Very conscious on time as he charges into the base. Metro actually has not achieved a three star this weekend. So he will be wanting to break that curse moving into Sunday. And he is off to a powerful start here. Things going on all over the base, Woody. He is squeezing this base hard, Judo. Metro gets damage done on the top left and bottom right corners to set up a funnel for this dragon raid. Soaring through the skies and ready to breathe fire straight onto this town hall. He's got loons out in front as always to soak damage against those inferno towers, shutting it down with a freeze spell. Here he'll get that air sweeper and inferno tower offline. Rage it up and get the first star. Interesting to come directly into an air sweeper. Definitely non-traditional, but he gets through that, gets through the main damage. There is a air defense and single target inferno at the north of the base. That is my main concern, Woody, and he needs to save the spells for that because the dragons have gone across to the other side of the base. Two air oh, defense the queen. in the top section, and the dragons up there are going to be mincemeat. But heroes coming in to help out might just be enough to get the damage done. They need to knock a power at the air defense. Single target Inferno and that eagle artillery. Tesla farm popping up over in the top right corner of the base. is going to be even more damage on the dragons. Can they survive through this scatter shot, Judo? Oh, I don't think he expected the clan castle troops to come out here, Woody. He is distracted big style. The king is fortunately getting through the troops, which does allow the queen to get the eagle massive but with the dragons down it's not meant to be and it is all about percentage existence not getting the three stars and this is exactly what the queen walkers needed for the first attack Long arms for the reach around this base, but he couldn't get the squeeze in the end. Metro hitting on all angles, but the last line of defense will hold for the Queen Walkers. Their impressive base design will gain another pickup here as Metro from Existence will be sent packing with a two-star 85%. I'm sure he wanted more than that, but try and just shake off the nerves, ease themselves into the match. But we know how good Queen Walkers are. Both of these teams were in last year's championship finals. Existence actually placing third under the name of Team Queso, and Queen Walkers will be wanting to improve on their position last year too. And if there's anyone from last year you'll remember on that queso squad, it's gotta be Rigo Torres. The MVP of this lineup will be on defense this time. His base building skills put to the test by Stadra. He is using the Super Witches, Woody. He has used this strategy for the previous two wars as well. One of those attacks resulted in a three star and the other an 87% two star. So he is obviously hoping that this one is the three to give the Queen Walkers an early lead. The power of lightning called down from above into the bottom left compartment with a warden walk to back it up. That blunderbuss dealing damage to outside buildings and setting up for the super witch funnel. These big witches go really slowly, unfortunately, and time has been a factor multiple times on these hits. That means that Stadra needs to make the most of those jump spells to hop over big, tightly compacted compartments in the middle of the base and ensure he can reach that eagle artillery far and away at the top side before time runs out. 
I really like the use of the archers as well towards the corners. Very well protected. They can just chip away at the buildings the entire raid and he doesn't have to commit a lot of troop capacity to it. Now the super witches are getting through the lava hound which is meant as a time restraint. They finally get through to the town hall but still a lot of base to take down Woody and over a minute in. The last three spellers have to shut down the Giga Inferno. Warden ready to pop that Eternal Tome if he chooses to do so. No, soaks the Giga Bomb and those big boys are taking some heat. The Inferno Tower is going to continue heating up and you really want to make sure none of them lock onto the Super Witch. It looks like he'll evade that big hit right now. But over on the right corner, even more destruction coming in. A Barbarian King and Pekka trying to chop through walls, but the defending Archer Queen will have none of it. I think he's trying to hold on to the Grand Warden's ability as long as possible when he starts getting into this central area. There we see it. Royal Champion still to be, be deployed. Will she come in from the 9 o'clock area? She does, Woody, just as I say that, to sideswipe the base. But the single target Inferno is the main damage dealer now. A fusillade of destruction coming straight through the core, up the gut, and they've only got one more exit point. A single target inferno heating up big boys all around. Those heroes have got to be shaken, but they are not deterred. Stadra with the last stab, a royal champion ready to toss that shield. Oh. Single target inferno gets the cut, but Archer Queen still has her ability. Forced to pop it off. This is the last final countdown. There we go. The royal champion gets the final defense. He has a wizard to the bottom helping to take out any of the non-defensive buildings. And it will be a three star putting the Queen Walkers to an early lead here, Banks. Queen Walkers opening up with a triple against Existence. Existence needing to dig deep and finding some incredible attack strategies going forward because opening up with an 85% two star just isn't going to cut it at this stage in the competition, Woody. Dadra the Gadra turns it around and the Japanese squad will be back on their feet and holding court against Existence. A one-star advantage early on in this best of two format is going to be a big motivational lead for them. But if you want to see another big hitter coming on in, it's going to be from Michael DP. Huge destruction in the last couple of wars and looking to keep it together against the MVP of his opponent's lineup. He's brought mass drags again. They are really fearing the aerial assault category this time, Judo. Michael DP is using such a wide variety of attack strategies. The dragons are something we've seen a lot, but not by Michael. He has three start with hybrid, yetis, and Lalo. And I talked to the existence squad previously. They said they tried to make strides in their diversity, and they are showing that today and throughout such an incredible year of Clash of Clans. Such a quick start with the dragons in already, Woody. Never want to be predictable in your armies or your opponents can build bases specifically to uh, try to shut that down. Michael DP will have none of it though. An early siege machine will crash through that top right side and knock down a single target Inferno. They are being spun around by the town hall though. As the Klingons say, the wind does not respect a fool. The tornado trap slowing things down, but that's not going to be enough to shut off these dragons. Hell, fire breathing forth and on top. They've still got a couple of single target Infernos down on the backside though. Trying to keep those balloons out in front. It's not going to work out this time, Judo. It certainly isn't, but the Royal Champion comes into the left and she will help to take the single target Inferno down. Also keep on to the ability. Notice the Archer Queen to the right hand side as well. With her ability, she can take the Inferno Tower down and the air defense. This looks like an incredible three star. And look at the time, Woody. This is such a quick attack. Wow, this is incredible. Lightning fast offense and the heat is on. Yuta 14's base has been demolished as Michael DP will not just put up the three star, but if this does come down to a time race, he is going to be far and ahead thanks to this lightning quick performance. A great base identification by Michael DP and his fans will certainly be proud of how this is finished up. That was the perfect response for Existence. Not just getting the three star, but easily getting the three star. And like you said, if time were a factor, Existence have to have a very good advantage now. But the Queen Walkers will be happy where they are. They are so far 100% hit rate and will be wanting to continue that.
The Queen Walkers, along with alternate attacks, are the most consistent squad going in from the group stage. Undefeated and with two wars that have kept their hit rate uh, at that 70% mark, you got to expect that they're going to get at least 13 stars in this war, maybe even back up to the 14 mark with an average destruction above 95%. Even with a three star there from existence, it's not enough to pull ahead of the Queen Walkers, sure to get another great back to back showing. They certainly have put on a wonderful performance this weekend. 14 13 over Nishang Dance, 13 10 over Vertang. Gaku is an expert with the hybrid attack, so he is sticking to what he knows, taking out the Clan Castle troops early on here with the Queen Charge, but he knows he didn't get the full pull, and he still has more spells to deal with this Lava Hound. It's pretty good news the way that those troops came out though, finishing off the headhunter early and quick means that he doesn't have as much damage to worry about against his Archer Queen. Still slowed down a little bit here, he's gonna speed things up with that Rage spell and keep her topped off despite those two Expos firing away at her. She is still at full health and this Queen Charge is looking strong. I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about time though as we are now one minute in and need to get this hybrid army going in fast. 16 miners and 9 hogs, a great complement to each other, tearing down defenses and additional buildings alike. Look at that super wall breaker just sneaking in to allow the queen across towards the town hall. Perfect timing there as well to allow the queen just to beeline to the town hall for that first star in this attack. And we already have the hybrid coming in. I think Gaku heard you, Woody, knows that time is ticking and he is getting things moving now. This is a beautiful funnel set up. Everything in the top corner demolished. The entirety of this raid now will sweep down from the top left down to the bottom and back up to the top right, tearing down everything in its path. A Tesla farm pops up in the center of the base and that's not gonna be too much for Gaku to worry about. He's got two more heal spells to drop down on all these hogs and miners, which are dropping shovels and hammers everywhere. Splash damage cannot concentrate fire when there are so many troops spread out everywhere and Gaku looks cleared for landing. A Another three-star performance, Judo! What a beautiful move! With the heal spell down to the bottom to keep that big pack of hog riders alive through the scatter shot. It allowed the Royal Champion to continue taking out the Tesla. Still has that ability. He should use it just to help out with time momentarily because this one is another three-star. Queen Walkers not taking their foot off the gas, not giving existence any breathing room here. And it is another beautiful attack. Three stars again. What an incredible war, Banks. No breathing room indeed, Judo. Queen Walkers putting their foot down and keeping the gas going. Two triples on the board. Existence are going to have to bring their A game if they have any chance of staying in this war. We've only had two attacks apiece. Still plenty of time to go in these uh, in this first semi-final matchup. So there's still plenty of time to catch up. But Queen Walkers definitely looking like they're not going to slip, Woody. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and the archer queen is the powerhouse of this squad. Queen walkers living up to their name have done so much damage with these heroes early on in the raid setting up for a perfect funnel tearing down key defenses. The multi-stage hits here from the queen walkers is what really is standing out to me now as Almolin will take the turn. Existence moving in next here judo. Al Mualin is one of the players that is perfect across this weekend and he has used dragons for each one of the attacks. So again, sticking with what he knows, looking for the response, but just mixing in a few bat spells with this one, Woody. Oh, that Eagle Artillery far and on the outside, stabbed that early by the Royal Champion, but she doesn't take it down. Crucial misstep for Almwalin. That Ice Golem got there a little bit too late to freeze any defenses to help out, and I don't think that this is the way he was hoping things would go early on. Certainly not, and it's going to be difficult for him to adapt because of the Air Sweeper pointing in that direction. Maybe he will send a Valkyrie in, he's got one of them, or maybe he's just hoping that the Dragons sideswipe that area, take a little bit more time and take it down. But either way, he has already taken a lot of damage from the Eagle, which he was not intending with this attack. Here comes the Battle Blimp though, Woody, straight for the Town Hall. He has got to get this because we did see a one-star yesterday against one of the Queen Walkers. Bases. 
raged up dragons with an eternal tome to protect them through. That battle blip goes straight for the town hall with a freeze to help out. Uh-oh, misses the Inferno Tower there, but will catch the Wizard Tower. Great job, but still soaking a massive amount of damage from the Giga Bomb. He's got two stars, but three's gonna be tough up on the top side. Bats dropping Guado into the entire compartment. Hardly any splash defenses to stop them. He's done as good as he can do here, Woody, using the bats to take out the splash damage at the north. They can then take out the rest of the point defense. A drama no. moves across to the wizard tower. It's going to get it, but there is an air defense that could take down the dragons here. The loss of the bats to the eagle artillery puts the final nail in the coffin. You gotta say, that early strike from the royal champion didn't hold on as much as she needed to. And Al Wallen might miss the three star as a result. The final air defense up top is popping down. Dragons all over the place. I'm a bit worried now. I don't think he's got it anymore. How much health does this? Oh, how much health does this dragon have? Oh. It went straight down. And it's not what they need. So many mistakes in that attack which just didn't go his way and this means that although in the first semi-finals with alternate attacks and Vatang, ATN are one three star ahead, Queen Walkers could put themselves two three stars ahead here already. A heartbreaker for Al Mualin of existence. One of the closest hits coming within the razor's edge of a three star. But only in horseshoes and hand grenades does close count and existence will now trail by a big star gap. As the Klingons say, death is an experience best shared. And unfortunately for that royal champion dive, her death will be shared by many bats and dragons. Queen Walker's looking to take the advantage. Interestingly enough, Woody, throughout this year's qualifiers, alternate attacks had the highest hit rate, three stars that is, across the qualifiers, and the Queen Walkers had the second highest three star hit rate. So it's interesting to me that we see both of these teams accelerating in the semifinals as well. Well, it's not over. It's a big lead for the Queen Walkers and a chance to push it even further. Stars is the next one, and if he's true to his name, he'll get three more for his team. Triple Lava Hound with 27 balloons mixing things up away from the dragons we've seen so often, but still has brought those seven lightning spells to zap down hard and fast. Where's he gonna start him off with, Judo? Well, with seven lightning spells, you tend to go towards either the clan castle or the queen. Looks like he is taking the archer queen, gets a single target inferno, an expo, and also creates the pathing that we always talk about. Crucially important for a lava loon attack. Lava's out in front to protect those shots from the air defenses while balloons do the heavy lifting out back. A stab into the top left compartment will be enough to get that CC pull and the town hall down early on as long as everything goes according to plan here. Tornado Trap will pull around the wall wrecker, but that's good news for Stars who knows that he won't have to worry about that later on in the raid. Those balloons should have a clear path for landing with two haste spells to keep them going fast. He's got a good strong push into the town hall, which has already gone down and can still get some more of the defenses down. With the royal champion reinforcing, looks like he might be going towards the scatter shot and also the sweepers. If he can take the sweepers down, it just means for the lava loon, they are not going to be pushed anyway. And it looks like he's pretty much going to uh, mitigate the pathing around them anyway. Surprised to see the free spell on that scatter shot in Archer Tower, just trying to get that Royal Champion a little bit deeper in. A lot of times you see her uh, doing the work early on and then using free spells late to support the balloons, but instead he gets the shot off that air defense and with its defeat, Stars has taken out another key structure. I only see one air defense left on this map. Yeah, the Lava Hound is going straight across to it, but notice the couple of balloons that were sent in towards the air sweeper in the middle. He has to take that down, and it looks like it will. I think he was trying to get the Royal Champion Shield to hit both of the air sweepers, but with that down, the balloons can move in. He still has the Grand Warden's ability to freeze and to haste, but he's already taking a lot of damage on the balloons, and they are going down fast, Woody. 
four headhunters moving in, but a little bit late there. The Royal Champion has already stabbed down quite a few loons. Oh, no. Eternal Tome to protect from splash damage, but that Scattershot and Eagle Artillery are doing massive work. The troops are not pathing in deep enough to the base to get to them, and Stars is going around town! A Tesla Bar pops up on the outer edge, and he is nowhere he wanted to be, Judo! The balloons took so much damage early on. Maybe an earlier Grand Warden ability, early use of the spells might have helped out, but he is just trying anything right now to push the percentage, keep themselves ahead of existence, because this is a big falter in the Queen Walkers. They will still be ahead with a three star, but the percentage will be dragged right down with this attack now, and that is devastating for the Queen Walkers, Woody. One slip up can cost you an entire war, and here Stars is falling behind. He gets the two star, but this is the lowest hit that we have seen from the Queen Walkers in a while, and is not what they were looking for to push forward. Remember, this is a best of two, so even though the Queen Walkers are ahead right now, there is still plenty of time for existence to mount a comeback. Only a one star advantage for the Queen Walkers to go forward with. Existence can breathe a brief sigh of relief seeing Queen Walkers get their first two star on the board of the first best of two semi final in the Clash World Finals. This is extreme, it's going to be extremely close because, as you said, Woody, there's only one star separating them now, and it's just about bumping that percentage up as well for Existence and then also trying to collect that additional star, Judo certainly is. The, the Queen Walkers did not want that existence with their opportunity. Krasan was the MVP in their qualifier. And remember, existence had one qualifier and they took the golden ticket, Woody. This one might have been the MVP from their qualifier, but he has yet to get the triple yet on the world's final stage. He is here to prove right now why he is the best and deserves that distinction. Another Law Loon strike following up on that last two star that we saw. Can we get existence back in the lead? That is the question ahead for Krizan now. A big zap early on straight into the heart of his base. I wonder if he was hoping to try to get that Eagle Artillery down early. The Barbarian King is going to provide a nice funnel, but he'll need another hero to add on. Yeah, I thought maybe the Archer Queen would have been sent in towards the Eagle, sends her a little bit further round so that she can hopefully get the scatter shot and the Eagle. So we have mentioned high risk, high reward, oh, wow. existence giving it what they have. Both of the major defenses going down oh. here, and what a start for existence on this attack. One final punch from the Barbarian King's Iron Fist, and he knocks it apart. He's also got an enemy queen that he's going to take a few shots at. Royal Cloak is going to soup up his own queen. Oh, so close there, Woody, but he could send a headhunter right across. There are the two headhunters. Let's see where they go. They go to the Royal Champion first. They might just get a strike on the queen if he's fortunate and combines it with the Grand Warden's ability, but he's got a lot to worry about here with the Clan Castle troops, but Battle Blimp for the Town Hall and concentrating on the Lava Loon to the north as well. So much going on for Croissant. A few more headhunters left if he chooses to add them on, but even if he doesn't, Lava Pups or Balloons could crash in and finish off that Queen. She is a big key target to have to deal with, but Creason's not quite worried about her most right now. He lets that Gigabomb explode on all this troops, holding on to that Warden ability. A Tornado's gonna drag them back even further, and that is a big slip up for Creason. A huge defense in the center of the base for a Lava Loon attack. We know how much existence like the Lava Loon. You never have red air bombs near an air defense because a Lava Hound can set them off. So that is why we had so many of them clumped in the middle. It took down a big group, but Croissant is going to get it anyways, Woody. Balloons charge on through the remaining defenses, and he is going to get this one despite the base being set up to defend this strike. Strategy. Powerful perseverance from Krizan. The first three star for him this month and existence all of a sudden are right back in it. Queen Walkers will need a triple to maintain their lead as existence is clawing back from the precipice. Look at the percentage. 94.3 average destruction for the Queen Walkers and 94.24 existence. So a three star would keep Queen Walkers ahead on the star count, but they would need a 95% two star to keep ahead on percentage. Such an exciting matchup and it is super, super close as we knew it would be. 
The Japanese juggernauts are here to stay. Klaus with two triples already. The undefeated leader of this squad is ready to give it another go. Lightning takes down the queen and a multi-target Inferno and there's only two singles left standing now. He's brought a golem into this raid, an uncharacteristic big boulder out in front to block for likely a hero dive later on. But check out this town hall stab first. Gets the CC pull and will poison down most of the troops standing on in there. Super minions manage to fly high and around it though. Yeah, a quick early stab with the sneaky goblins to get the town hall. He's got a nice little funnel set to the left and the right. And Klaus is an expert with the Lava Loon. His two three-star attacks throughout Friday and Saturday were with this army composition. Now with the Golem, he is going to be able to use that to tank a lot of the defenses and maybe realized that the freeze from the Ice Golem might not hit too many of these. So that's why he's substituted in with the regular Golem. The gaps in those walls are really helpful when you want to bring in a big tank to soak those shots for you, hoping that the golem will bury in deep and continue taking fire. It looks like he's getting exactly what he's counted on here. The golem ready to pop and both heroes still charging through, slicing and dicing through these defenses. He has done amazing work. Super Wallbreaker cracks through the inner core and that is a juicy bite out of this donut now. Klaus might even get this scatter shot down as another golem gets right on top of it and explodes. The golem only just popped. He now has the golemites. Tornado Trap has popped, uses the queen's ability. What he, there's no base left for the Lava Loon. There is literally the Eagle Artillery and a couple of other defenses that don't do major damage to the Lava Loon, but Klaus's main issue now is time. Time always a factor, but he's done so much work early on. I'm not too concerned about the cleanup here. He's got another haste spell to drop after this one he's already got down. And there's only a few splash structures that could cause any trouble at all. That air defense and wizard tower in the far left corner are gonna be the biggest Roblox, but I think he's not gonna stumble. Last haste spell is out, and here he goes! Klaus dropping in heavy will get another triple for the Queen Walkers. If you thought existence were staging a comeback, just wait for Klaus to have his say. Did you see the minions in the center of the base with four or five red air bombs chasing after them? That is why it was so crucial to get his heroes into the middle so the Lava Loon did not have to go there. They were well protected, beautiful attack, three stars, and puts the Queen Walkers back in the lead, Banks. You can see Queen Walkers all dancing around in their little cameras right there because Queen Walkers have got three out of four triples on the board. Existence also shaping up to be a really good war because Existence are starting to pump those numbers up as well. It's now down to Rigo Torres to see if Existence can close this out as close as possible to Queen Walkers, Woody. It is mighty difficult to get maximum value out of a golem, but he just did it. Klaus had perfect base identification and got it in so deep to protect the king and queen for an amazing charge. You rarely see golems because ice golems are often better used to shut down defenses with its freezing ability, but the unparalleled hit point per army camp space stat for the golem is just so perfectly used in exactly that circumstance. Hats off to him one more time. But let's go back to Rigo Torres. You know him and love him. One of the best attackers from existence and needs to get this last attack on top. Starting off with the lightning spells to the multi-target Inferno. The one thing I would add about the Golem as well, Woody, is it cannot be sprung off the tr uh, map by spring traps, which an ice golem can be. Now the Grand Warden walk to the left hand side of the base. There's a lot of storages, but do you think he's going for the town hall here? Do you think he wants that down early and then just charge through the center because he has the compartments open? Somewhat rare to see just the heroes diving in straight for the town hall and not trying to get even more value back in after that. He's got healers backing them up. So I'm yeah now seeing the battle blimp making that beeline oh, the for queen. the town hall. Crashing the straight walked. down in, Judo. The Queen has walked to the side, Woody, and that is not what Rigo Torres wanted. He will get the Town Hall, but he needed the Queen in the center of the base alongside his push. Let's see if he can adapt and still have enough force through the center. 
He'll swipe up the outer edge, but take a look at the defenses that have been taken down so far. Lightnings that finish off the bottom right compartment. There's a lot in the top and uh, back right sides, but he's hopping over walls and it's got pretty long range here. Rigo Torres has taken a big loss without that Archer Queen, but the healers are doing their best in the center. I'm worried about the Super Minion though. Uncontested and firing away at the healers and that Grand Warden losing his life or it would be devastating and he's down, Judo! Yeah, there's not a lot Rigo Torres can do here. He could have sent maybe a wizard in towards the Super Minion or the Baby Dragon, but he obviously feels it is better to save them for percentage because the troops in the middle are down, everything is going south, and Rigo Torres has not managed to get this done. The Queen walking was so crucial to this raid, and he now has to look around the base and just see what buildings he can pick off. That is gonna be it for Rigo Torres. Drops the last few troops for additional cleanup on the outer edge, but a two star in the 70s gives Queen Walkers the chance to slam the gate in their face. 12 stars total from the first war, and that is not anywhere near what you would have needed to defeat the Queen Walkers in any of their past battles. 13, 14 stars even from them. And with one more attack left to go, that's what we're expecting to see. Queen Walkers, are very familiar with the best of two format. They won the CIC community tournament in recent months with 29 stars out of a possible 30. So they have the diversity and depth within their clan to take down a lot of bases across two wars. Uda 14 continues to step up to get three stars across wars. And if he does it now, they are in a very good spot, Woody. The final attack from this first war of the best of two series in the Clash of Clans World Championship semifinals is now underway. Wall Wrecker to crash through the top compartment and give that queen an easy charge through. Gets a coconut loon down and catches a seeking air mine. Unit 14 will drop the poison and finish off those CC troops. Wall Wrecker makes it almost oh. all the way in, but another layer of walls will deny him judo. He has super wall breakers, so he could send one of them in, but he's got to be careful at the timing so that it goes to the right compartment. Maybe trying to send it in towards the archer tower that is just above of the scatter shot might be the best play or to the elixir storage to the left let's see what Uda 14 can do as he is charging in with arguably the most difficult attack strategy to perform careful careful thread the needle and get that perfect positioning because otherwise you're going to be throwing this hit away Queen Walkers want another triple to pull even further ahead, and with this Lava Hound attack, there is no room for error. Additional funneling out on the right side from the Barbarian King, but the Queen has now engaged the Town Hall and will drop it nice and fast. Rage spell to top her back off, but those healers start, are starting to wander out of range. She's moving on to the next compartment, quite healthy though, and will have a chance to engage another big defense, that enemy Urcher Queen, and an air defense, single target in the left corner, Judo. Beautifully done, starting the Lava Loon to the right, and we are seeing this quite a lot now. The Queen charge, but just walking her into different compartments rather than the center. Looking for the enemy Queen, she will go down with a perfectly placed free spell, and an early Grand Warden ability protects the balloons through. Uda 14 is not losing a big pack of them early on. This looks pretty good, but the single is on the Queen. Oh, scatter shots are eliminated. The queen walks straight through with a free spell. She'll be able to finish off that single target inferno. Oh, no. That is the last one standing. And Yuna's queen is going to go on a rampage. He's lost the balloons, but there's still some work left to be done on that right side. Royal champion ability left to be held. Um, but what took so long for that lava hound, Judo? Oh, I think it was just the sweeper in the center kept pushing the balloons back and he couldn't reinforce to the center, but he could still get this, Woody. The queen has the healers. The royal oh, champion's right. ability just goes off. Oh, the barbarian king takes down the royal champion. She missed the eagle and that is huge. It's definitely now not going to happen. Holding on to a wasted haste spell now. Yuda is just going to cross his fingers hoping he can get as much percentage as possible. That is gonna be all he wrote though, and with a really long investment early on with the queen charge, doesn't get rewarded with the three stars that he was hoping for. Existence defenses will get another pickup here, but the queen walkers will have the advantage in this best of two set, 13 to 12, Banks. 
Yes, an 86% two star for Yuta 14 coming out of that war. He had the opportunity to go two stars ahead against Existence before leading into that second best of two. Very unfortunate for him, but Existence.